On this week's show, we've got a political special. With the general election looming, we're going to be looking at the four major parties and who you should vote for as a property investor. Hi, I'm Russell Leeds. I'm Marie-Hélène Ferguson. And uh, welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. This is going to be a, an interesting show this week. We're not going to be doing it quite the normal format. First of all, the new Alastair. Alastair will be back next week, but he's been replaced, upgraded with a better looking, more intelligent version. Um, so, um, Marie... Is that That's fine. That's fine. Call I call, me I'm the only like. person that calls her Marie. That's fine. Uh, Marie works quite a lot with us. She's from the Cultural Intelligence Group. She's the CEO. Um, and she works a lot with our business, helping us out with strategy and systems. But the reason we got her in for this show is she's also a lawyer. She's worked in journalism, worked for the BBC, worked for Sky. Got a lot of insights on 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 um, on politics, uh, a lot certainly more so more so than I do. So it's brilliant to have you on the show, and I'm really looking forward to going through the four parties and letting the guys um, decide who they should vote for. Yeah, well, thank you very much for having me on, and I look forward to challenging on some of that. I'm absolutely, I've so much enjoyed working with you guys, and I can absolutely see the value of doing this for people because if you are investing in property, you need to know what the parties are saying and it's just going to be really it's going to be good fun i think having a look at the policies that you agree with that i agree with can we see where we are in the middle and are they clear in fact are some of the policies clear or are there a whole load of rubbish are they are they designed probably to, <laughs> are they designed to actually vote for them um in a way that mm, are they going to follow through these are just pledges let's not forget they're, you know they're not actual Promises. I mean, are we going to? Are they going to be held to account when they do get into power? So you're not saying that a politician would promise one thing and deliver another, are you? Oh no! Heaven forfend! <laughs> Heaven forfend! Right. Okay. So let's have a look at this. So we're going to start off with the Conservatives. Yep. They are currently in power, and we're going to see what they're kind of saying. Should we vote for them? Is it good? Is it bad? Overall, by the way, I think it's pretty pretty good. But right. let's see. Let's see what we think. We'll break into it. So here the, we've picked out some of the key things that we that, that we think we're relevant to you guys. So first of all, uh, encourage long-term fixed-rate mortgages that cut the cost of deposits to aid home ownership. Well, that's obviously a good thing because if we can cut the deposit yeah. on, 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 a ha- on a on a house, so you can you can. Own. Now, what I'm not sure about is does this is this like a if you're living in it, does it only work on residential mortgages or is it relevant to buy to let? It's not very clear. It's not very clear. I don't think they've given that detail, but I, I completely agree with you. And isn't that how Samuel started in the first place? 100% mortgage, like no deposit at all. It, is it that was. right? Yeah, yeah. So if they can do anything like that, that reduces the amount of deposit, which is what, roughly 25% now? Right. That people are going to try and find? If, if it's a um, if it's buy to let, yeah. Yeah. So, so it, dep- it, it does depend slightly, but... At the end of the day, I mean, there's a lot, I mean, you guys at home watching this, some of you probably will already own, own your own home, some of you won't. So it's a good way of getting people on the ladder, Definitely. which is always a good thing because everyone should be buying property, whether you're buying to invest, buying to live in. As you know, I don't live in my own house, uh, but, but just buying property is a good thing. So it's if we can make thing. that easier, tickety boo. Tickety boo. Good job, the Tories. Absolutely. Uh, number two, ext- again, it's kind of similar actually, similar point this one. Extend the help to buy scheme. From 2021 to 2023. We did a show not long ago talking about the help to buy scheme. It's got pros and cons. You might want to check that show out to find out a bit more about that. Um, And and on that show, we told you it was ending in 2021. Well, apparently... It's been extended. Apparently not. It's going to be extended to 2023. So again, you know, make what you will of it. Again, it does help people that can't afford necessarily uh, to buy, to get onto the ladder. There were five... 5% 5% deposit. So again, would you agree that's a pretty good thing? I would. Anything that helps people get onto the property market, it's got to be a good thing. All right. What yeah. else? Next one. Reform leaseholds with a ban on the sale of new build leasehold houses. Right? And restrict and ground restrict rents. And restrict ground rents to peppercorn. Okay. So some of you might not, not, not know what that means. What I believe um, that they're talking about there, what a lot of developers are doing is they're, they're building like a new street but they're making it a privately owned street so that they can put um, they can put ground, ground rent on the houses. So rather than when you buy, even though it's a house, not an apartment, when you buy the house, it's leasehold, not freehold. Yeah. And they're keeping the ground rents very, very low, so people are buying it, and then they're hiking up the ground rents because in the contract they can change, they can change it, 
and look, in some cases up to like 500 pounds wow. and they're just absolutely fleecing yeah. um, whoever's bought it, whether it be homeowners, whether it be landlords, um, yeah. although then the tenant would pay, but it'd make it basic. If you bought that as an investment property and then the ground rent was 500 pounds, it pretty much make it impossible to rent out because yeah. no tenant is going to pay 500 pounds. So it's a bit of a, it's a, it's a, bit of a con, uh, really right. and and it sounds to me like that law is is just basically taking that away so you, you can't do that anymore and stopping it and it, and it yeah. obviously if they've already made them leasehold they're restricting it to a peppercorn rent which is good and fair so yeah. again pr- I'm, I'm pretty happy with that i think that's a very you know good i think it's a good thing and but by the way i'm supposed to pay peppercorn rent i've never handed over a peppercorn in my life Really? Have you have you actually handed over a physical I've, peppercorn? I've, I've I've never had peppercorn. Have so you not? I've, well, I've, I've had peppercorn, and nobody's ever asked me for my peppercorn. So I've got like twenty five peppercorns, like you know, just in case. Just, it, just in call, case they ask. Why, why, do, why, do, why, do, why do they call it peppercorn? <laughs> it was just a, a, it, because it was just in exchange for something. You have to give something in law. So uh-huh. in consideration for whatever it might be, and in this case being allowed to have a house on that particular land yeah you've got to have you've got to give something even if it's of very low value so that's why they decided peppercorn is a very low value but i've never actually exchanged my peppercorns i'm wondering whether i'm actually in breach of contract because i've still got my 25 peppercorns in my drawer just for your steak just for my steak (laughs) (laughs) um okay now this next one yes i don't like okay but again it's something we've talked about before um so basically they're looking at abolishing um section 21 yeah what do you think of that well on the one hand um as a home owner myself and i've actually let my property a number of times when i've moved around the country around the world um i quite like the ability to be able to say to somebody okay i don't need to give you any reason whatsoever but i'd like my house back thank you very much obviously i'm going to give the right amount of notice i'm not going to be in breach of contract you know i'm going to follow through on the promises that i've made Mm. but i've not had to give a reason other than i'd like my house back thank you very much so to me it's a little bit worrying and i'm wondering what they're going to replace it with what's the how are you going to get your house back well you've got um section i think it's 18 as well which is which is slight is Slightly different. I haven't done this for because I used to run a letting agency. Right. So back then, I used to, I used to, use, but pretty much the go-to was is, it was Section Twenty One. Yeah. It was only, um, but you can use Section Eighteen if they've broke it, if they don't pay the rent or yeah. something like that. Uh, but even then, we often went for Section Twenty One just because it was easier. Because it's uh, easier. An yeah. easier process. You don't have to go to look with Section Eighteen. You can go to, go to court, and yeah. I believe it's eighteen. I might have just check that. If I, if I am, maybe just put an edit at the bottom. But I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. Um, so that that was that's that's the other option. So I'm sure they're going to replace it with something. They must do, but, it's, but it stays seem I stay silent on it at the moment. So may, just, maybe a bit more digging. It's, str- it's a strange one that, and obviously for me, I can sit on both sides of the fence because I'm a tenant. I'm also a landlord. Um, mm. And I just think it's just fair. Mm. If it's my house, if, if, the, if the place I'm living now, if the landlord wants his house back, as long as he honours the contract we've agreed yeah. for the time that we've agreed, yeah. and if I'm a tenant and I want longer, then I, because most landlords will agree a, as longer as longer rent as you want, I mean, as longer fixed term as you want. Yeah. If I went in and say I want two years, they'd be like, yes, please. Yeah. If they say no, so if you're worried about that, just agree a longer, agree yeah. a longer term at the start. Yeah, exactly. And if they say no to that. It then means that they've at least got in the back of their mind a plan on yeah. getting it back, and then it might not be the right place for you then. Because if you want to settle somewhere for two, three years, yeah. then it, and the landlord's not going to give you more than a year, then maybe you go somewhere else. Yeah, but if it's my product, yeah, and and I've honoured the contract we agreed, I've got the right to say I don't want to continue it. Yeah, I completely agree. Mental. I completely agree. Um, okay, interesting one. Yes. Now, interesting one. Uh, Bring in a stamp duty surcharge for non-UK resident buyers. So basically, stamp duty is going to go up yep. if you're non-UK. Yep. Now, for me, it's not an issue living in the UK. For most people watching this, if you're buying in the UK, probably not an issue. For everyone voting for this, definitely not an issue because you're voting. If you vote, you often live in the UK if you're voting. But for foreign investors, what, what, do, you, what do you make of that? Is it fair? I think it's trying to discourage a number of properties that are being bought by people from outside the UK. I think there's been a disproportionate amount, certainly in sort of zone one in central London. Mm -hmm. We see it everywhere, especially some of the big, beautiful houses, not just zone one, to be fair, other areas. 
particularly sort of at the higher end as well. Um, and the houses just remain empty and they get they're occupied sometimes in the summer for two or three months, but sometimes they remain empty for years and years and years and years. And I think London has just sort of reclaim a bit of that property and have the opportunity to invest in that kind of mm. property. So I think it might deter um, non-UK resident buyers, but of course, who knows what the effect is going to be of Brexit anyway in terms of deterring foreign investment you know how easy is that going to be it might be easier it might be who mm. knows so it's it's an interesting one it's definitely designed to deter the sort of foreign investor which obviously you know means there's less buyers potentially and if yeah. there are less buyers it's less competitive market so probably yeah. for most people watching this show probably a good thing yeah. uh, and then lastly um, I g- build at least a million more homes again more homes means less demand, which means prices would come down, which means if you're in, in, in the act of buying properties, probably a good thing. Yeah, probably a good Great. thing. It doesn't say what kind of homes, affordable no. homes, expensive homes, who's going to be building the homes, who's Don't making care. money off building the homes? Is Me, it? I'm going to build <laughs> some of them. Them. <laughs> You're going to build a million homes. <laughs> no, not, a, there's a challenge. I'd love that. I'd a love million. that. I'd love See that, that too. That. Probably yeah. not. Maybe 10. Um, so yeah, So I think, uh, overall, I think it's pretty good. You yeah. got obviously. I'm not sure on section 21, but pr- from a property investment point of view, nothing in there that's seriously worrying. But also nothing in there that's amazingly amazing either. No, there's no wow factor for me in there. What are your thoughts if you had to if you had to give it a mark out of 10? Mark out of 10. Yeah. What What would your thoughts be there? Um, seven. Okay, I think that's a little bit generous. I might be more along the lines of about a five out of ten. Well, should we go six? Should we do a compromise? Smack bang we'll in the middle. There you go. Tories, the Tories, six out of ten. Gotcha. Okay, so next up is, uh, you know, the, the, the opposition party yep. is uh, Labour. Yep. So let's have a, have a quick look at some of the, the key policies that affect you guys at home. So uh, first one, for, for tenants in receipt of benefits... Arrange for the housing elements to be paid directly to the private landlord. That is a brilliant policy uh, because I think I actually think it used to be like that yep. uh, for DSS tenants, and then they changed it so the money went. But then the problem is, is that a lot of people on DSS, about sounding rude, aren't very good with their money, and they'd give them the money and they would spend it, and they'd not have the money to give the landlords, which puts off that is actually counterproductive because yep. it puts off landlords taking people on the DSS. Absolutely, and it makes it more difficult. Whereas now, it'll actually make DSS pretty attractive because you're actually more likely to get your rent from a DSS tenant yep. than you are from a private tenant. Absolutely. So for me, brilliant rule. Love it. Uh, agree, agree? I completely agree. Yep. Cool. Um, now, the next three will kind of combine together because interestingly, all about development. Mm. So I don't know if this affects you guys at home if you're into development. I, I am into development. These are, and they're, they're reasonably positive as well. So set up uh, the new English Sovereign Land Trust to enable land to be brought more cheaply for low-cost housing. So if you're providing low-cost housing... Which you can buy the land more you cheaply. You can buy the land cheaply, yeah. which uh, makes it desirable for, la- for people to do low-cost housing. So that's a kind of a win-win. I quite, I quite like that. Yep. Um, use it or lose it tax for developers on stalled housing developments. Um, I get that. I understand that because the last thing that you want is landlords... Uh, sorry, not landlords, developers half finishing projects here and there and I, I get that but it, for me it's kind of poking their nose it because it, it could make it do normally the reason is they've run out of money so taxing someone that's run out of money is that's true that's true but when we were just talking about it another time I was asking you about it and you were saying I think how how prevalent is it that people start developments and then don't finish them and there is an element of people grabbing land, buying more land, investing in land, when in fact, rather than invest in more land, why don't they invest, they've got the money, just to finish off that one development? Do you think that's still the case, or what's your view on that? How many unfinished developments are there? I mean, is it a big problem or not? That's my question. It is a problem, mm. it, but it typically is because they've run out of money. Right, so taxing them is not gonna help, basically, is uh, it? Is it gonna add to the problem? Yeah. Yeah. I don't see. Yeah. I don't see. Yeah. How that? I, I, I'm not sure. I just think if someone, if if I buy land and I'm building it, I should be able to build as long as it's not like an eyesore. You know, it, it's, as long as it's fitting with the planning. There was there was a house in the village I used to live where builders bought land. They just built pet project, and it took them about 
15 years to build this house. They were literally just like a yeah. little bit. And then towards the end, I think the council made them like, like you've got to just finish it now because it's just it's it's an eyesore. terrible. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I, uh, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure what I make of that one. I'm not sure. But you know, if you're a developer, let us know what you think in the comments below. Um, prioritise brownfield sites for development while protecting the green belt. Again, development. I'm all into protecting the green belt for sure. Mm-hmm. It, de- it depends what that actually looks like. It's very vague. It Prioritise brownfield sites. What? Because obviously brownfield sites it might cost more for the developer. For those who might not be familiar with a brownfield site, it's land that's been land that's been developed on previously. Maybe you've had a factory on that land, and there might be an element of contamination. So it's a site that's kind of been left brown, literally. Um, so it is going to cost money to put that site right. You need to sanitise that site essentially. So. What are they saying? Prioritise those sites over and above green belts. So should it be that brownfield sites cost less yeah. than green fi- Well, it might be that the brownfield sites fit in with their English Sovereign Land Trust, for example. Well, exactly. So it might be a good thing. It could be. It's just too vague. It's too vague. If you get a subsidy, if you get help with actually sanitising the land, then make the brownfield sites available over and above the greenfield sites. Completely agree with that. Mm. That makes sense to me. Yeah. But I think there needs to be assistance with it. So it could be, if, they do, if they're running these in tandem, if somebody's really been clever and thought about how they all you know, match and work together, then that could be a really good thing. Yeah. In theory, that's all okay. But yeah. you, have to see what, you have to see what it looks like. Yeah, exactly. But, um, exactly. I'm not, so I'm not sure. And I'm always wary when they're, with, with, uh, the chain, when they're, when they're controlling it, for me. Yeah. It's always, so I'm not sure. Okay, next one. Interesting one. Yeah. Go ahead. You tell us. Upgrading existing homes to increase energy efficiency. Yeah. So that could become expensive. a legal requirement and therefore expensive. And who's going to bear that cost? The landlords. They're landlords. So bear so. in mind, if you've got any HMOs out there and you're voting for Labour, they might bring, they might make you spend money on them to get them, or they not might. just HMOs, anything, any property that you own. Um, or they might be thinking of assisting. So we'd have to kind of really maybe have a little look at what exactly is the plan because we've got some I, headlines here. I, d- I doubt it. I doubt Where it. would the money come from? I doubt have, it. It'll maybe they cost the landlord. It, right? it might be worth having a little look at. Yeah. Okay. Uh, build more low-cost homes, first-time buyers, discount home. Yeah, that, this one, right? I don't. Agree, I so don't agree with this one. Discount homes. So you, you again, for developers, discount homes with prices linked to the local incomes. Why? Would you link the price? If I have a house that I want to sell, why should that be linked to someone's income? Surely it's a supply and demand. The house is worth what the house is worth. Am I right? Well, I think, I think we might differ on this one because they're talking about building low-cost homes, right? Low-cost homes linked to the income. So if you happen to be in an area and you happen to be... Uh, I don't know, uh, you work in a bakery shop, okay, you're a baker, and your income isn't great, should you have the right to be able to buy affordable income, affordable to you? Yeah, of so course in you should. theory, it's a good theory. Well, I think hold on, it, I but, think you, but, but maybe not that, the house should be worth what the house is worth. I agree. So, of, of course, you should buy a home that's affordable for you, but there are houses in the UK that are 40 grand. Right. So go and so go, go and buy that. But what if your whole family lives in that village? And what you really want to do is stay in that village where all your network of friends. Bear in mind that if you are near your family, that's going to reduce your cost potentially of childcare. It's going to reduce your travel costs. It's going to reduce you know many many other things that would impact on that. So if you happen to be happen to have a low wage, should you be able to buy a low cost property not that is you, relevant that is not, affordable not, to you? Not if you can't afford one in your village. But that's the thing. It's also quite vague, to be honest with you. And it sounds a bit utopian in that, okay, so you, you only earn, let's say, 20 grand. What, what's the average earnings yeah, but now? I don't like the idea of controlling the, pri- the price. of the- How annoying would it be if, it, if you build a house to have the, it controlled? But I'd just be thinking, it's my house. I can sell it for as much as I can for possibly get. For the market get. rate. The market rate. There is a tension there why between... Should, why, should yeah. I, why should I reduce it? Why should... Why should the government yeah. dictate how much I sell my house for? I think the theory is a nice one. 
Is that it? it should be. Like, it's, no, it's I, not, do. I, I, I think. I think it's. Well, I, we've seen I, when I was living in Norfolk. I was living in villages where um, it, it, village that was born out of local needs, agriculture, all these things. So you had farmers living there, farmers' hands living there, and slowly, slowly, people are moving out of agriculture and they're going to they're going to work in say central Norwich and they're going to do relatively low paid jobs in central Norwich. They can't live in their village because guess what? The Londoners are buying up all the properties in the beautiful little postcard village, and the houses cost a million pounds. Okay, so I'm not not saying that, that, that those million pounds shouldn't be worth a million pounds but if a government's got an initiative to say okay why instead of moving all the locals out of these beautiful villages build them some affordable homing, affordable housing that they will be able to afford to buy and we're just being looking at okay well how much are these people earning in Norfolk because people in Norfolk could be earning a lot less than people say in Birmingham let's say so the, the the housing prices might differ according to what the local income is but i think you know, that's the theory like, it's not like you're taking the houses off the, the local people b- people moving from london the local people are benefiting because they're selling them their houses for more money it's not like we're saying they did they, yeah but that was one lot will have benefited yeah. so the one lot that sold them at a premium whenever that might have been 25 but, but years not, ago it's not like you're taking anyone's home off them no you're not but what they're saying is you're going to be building new homes yeah, but so, and so, making them so what, affordable. So why have you got a responsibility to provide? All you're going to do is bring down the area. If you've got a, an area where the house prices are a certain level... And well, th- th- that's the thing. That's the thing. Are you bringing down the area? Or could you be like London, where you've got such a mixture of housing? You can have expensive housing L- and London, cheap housing. London's a little bit different to everywhere else. That's true. That's very, very true. But they do live side by side. Every area in London has got affordable housing and very expensive housing. So I think they can live side by side. I think it's a really great ambition... Whether mm. it, they can pull it off, I don't know. Again, I think the devil's in the detail. We'll have to actually look at how they're going to measure that. You, you, you don't, don't agree. You don't, like it, you don't like it. Trust me. I think it's a Trust good ambition. Me, you don't like it. All right. Okay, so uh, <laughs> but, but, but next, um, uh, similar to the, what we talked about with the, with the Conservatives, very similar, slightly different. I actually slightly prefer the Conservatives, but it's very similar. Uh, end the sale of new build leasehold houses, same. Uh, abolish fees and conditions and give the leaseholders the right to buy the freehold at an affordable price. So the only difference is with Labour, they're saying that they'll um, they have the right to buy the freehold, whereas with Conservatives, it was it was just pe- peppercorn rent. I think the Conservatives are slightly better because what about if they're not in a position where they can afford to buy the, free, the freehold, which they probably won't be able to. Yeah. And then that means that they'll have to carry on paying the ground rent potentially a higher price yeah but it's it, at the end of the day it's getting rid of a, yeah. a, of a loophole so you know yeah. it's much more much less um okay next okay. one i've got a feeling we're going to argue about these next two actually oh, yeah. um introduce rent controls for private tenants well if you're allowed i mean how how can you vote for this i agree actually i i, I don't think this should be rent control um, I think actually in, on the commercial sector, but that's not what we're talking about here, there should be rent control because we've got empty high streets. So I think completely different topic. For private tenants, no, I think there should be affordable housing for people, you know, affordable rent, rental housing, fine. In the private market, it should be the going rate, actually. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. should. It's just yeah. to get, it goes against everything Yeah. that... No, yeah. I agree. So, induced rent control and open-ended tenancies. Well, no, I don't agree with that either. No. No. Um, like, I think for me, this is such a bad one that it undoes all the good work. Well, well, there wasn't that much good work, but the little bit of good work that was at the top, it totally kills it. Um, and um, the last one is um, new national levy on second homes used as holiday homes. That, again, is looking at the kind of London market, the London people who have their houses in Cornwall and have their houses in Norfolk. And, you know, I've, I've seen that in action. And I've seen villages demolished because they, the houses remain empty during the winter. They're only occupied in the summer. How would it work or, or you put, how would it work if you were renting it out and say, say you had a second home? Yeah. Vital kind of thing. But you were renting out as Airbnb, on Airbnb. It was a holiday home. You didn't stay there. Would you get a charge then? Well, that's an interesting point. I think that you know, if if they could change that to accommodate that, then that would be 
different, although you're making profit on it, so they probably they'll be taking tax off you anyway. But from our point of view, from landlord's point, point of, of view, view, any extra taxes on is, second you're homes not gonna want. is risky and we don't want. You don't want at all. I'm going to give this a 2 out of 10. You think that's harsh? <sighs> No, because I, I, I think that you're, you're so a property bad. investor. You're a property investor. You've got to look at it from your point of view. I think some of the ambitions are great. How realistic they are, yeah, I'm not as I'm not as as favourable to this as, as you might think I am. Actually, um, I would like people to be able to afford to live in the place where they have their families. I think that's really really important. But so you can for live in that, the next village, you know, you don't have to live yeah, in the same village. It's not the same thing. It's people like, but, move all the time now. Like I don't, like, I don't live anywhere near my family. I know, but but that has caused a lot of problems when you're not near your extended family. It has caused a lot of problems. People feel isolated. They're, ra- they're raising families on their own without grandma and grandpa and uncles and cousins and all of that. We're losing a lot of that. And that's, that's a shame. And that's because housing is so expensive. So I would really like to see more affordable housing. How that's achieved, I'm not sure this has convinced me that Labour have got the right ideas. Um, I'd like to look into more of the detail, as we've talked about. So I wouldn't give it, I don't think, I wouldn't give it more than a five, actually. I. But you gave the Conservatives a five. I gave the Conservatives a five. Are you I this gave is the as good as that? From well, a, bear in mind, this is a property, invest, from a property investor's point of view. Well, from a property investor's point of view, I'd have to agree with you. Two. I would have to agree with it you. It's a two. No, but can we up it to a three? Because I think I think we need to. We do have social responsibility, and I know that you do, and I know that a lot of what you stand for is helping everybody out, giving people freedom, um, financial freedom. Yes, right, but we'll also yeah, I we'll think give it a three. Harsh, we'll give it a three. There you go. Okay, next up in the orange corner, we mm-hmm. have the, the Liberal, Liberal Democrats. Democrats. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll take you through a couple of their key points, uh, obviously led by Joe Swinson. Um, let's have a look. So um, this is just property. We're not talking about Brexit or anything, luckily. Just property. Just property. Yep. So uh, first off is a pilot and a new subsidised energy saving home scheme, graduating stamp duty by the energy rating of the property. That just sounds crazy to me. Just, so I mean, you, so you're going to pay stamp duty based on the energy rating of your house. Yeah. Are there energy ratings on houses already? Yeah. So what do you think? Would that be good? It depends on it. Well, all I care about is how much stamp duty I pay. So it's not enough to to know. It just seems strange that stamp duty would be based on the energy efficiency and not the price of the house. It's, it's a very green policy. I would have, I would have thought that the, the Greens would, would be doing that, but... Uh, I don't know. It just For me, all, all I care about, whether you, whether you do it on energy efficiency, whether you do it on the price of the house, whatever you do it on... How or, much is how it? How much is it? And it? So is the idea that it's going to incentivise people to make their houses more energy efficient because then the stamp duty will be less? Yeah. So it's an incentive? Yeah. But it's that with an incentive comes a cost? Yeah. So it just—it just is a bit of a—it just seems like a crazy policy. Yeah, yeah. So well, it's a bit left field, isn't it? Yeah, okay. it was very—it's very left field. It's not—not yeah. not necessarily a bad thing. No. It just depends on the prices. Yeah. If it was—if it was the same kind of basic rate, I mean, something like Riversford House that we bought would have been screwed then, wouldn't we? On stamp duty. Yeah, your stamp duty would be through the roof. Also, how literally. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> there is no roof. <laughs> but actually, it was very energy efficient because there was no energy going on in there. So that, you know, we yeah. weren't losing Zero. any energy at all. <laughs> Zero. Uh, like, let's say you bought something like that, though. I don't quite understand how it would work. Because if what if you bought something like massive like that, would it be the same as something that was equally energy efficient that was left flat? Well, that's the thing. It how how would it be measured? It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's a yeah. stupid policy. Yeah. Okay. okay next, uh, increase minimum energy. Very, there's loads, by the way, on energy. We, we, we're just going to mention some of them. Um, increase minimum energy efficient standards in the private rented sector. Um, okay. Similar to, I think Labour had a similar similar one. Basically, it means if you. Uh, why is it just in the private rented sector as well? It's literally targeting landlords, isn't it? It's like, it you're a landlord. It should be in all sectors. 
Either yeah. you're going to be energy efficient or you're not. If that's a main policy of theirs, which it seems to be, it's at the top of the list, isn't it? Yeah. So why are they targeting private landlords? Maybe private landlords are more guilty of not making the Some properties energy efficient. energy efficient. Yeah. Maybe, so but they've, all, they've already brought it. They've already um, made it harder. They've already. So why? Why is the continue? I understand it's good to be energy efficient, of course, but it's just, it, it, it's, going to it's cost another more, cost. It's, it's another, another cost. bad one, really. Yeah. Uh, Okay, this next one is mental. It is literally mental. Uh, <laughs> allow local authorities to increase council tax by up to 500% for second homes. That's a lot of money. That 500%? That is insane. They just do not want people to have a second home. No. And that would just not make it worthwhile. Now, in terms of property investment, that's going to have an impact, right? Yeah, of course. Of course. I'm assuming it's second homes, third, third homes, home, fourth, fourth home, home, fifth home. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is this one. is literally worse than Labour's so far. This is awful. Um, introduce a stamp duty surcharge on overseas, same as the Tories. Uh, we talked about that earlier on, so make it more difficult for people in buying in the UK. Except but, they've limited it, this one, to second homes. Yes, yeah, so they can buy a first. They can buy a first. Which actually is, isn't as, mm, I don't know, because more of the, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't really. More matter. would buy first. Yeah. So I think the tourists. So this More is the softer. Empty ones. Yeah. So yeah, it's exactly. A bit, it's a so bit softer. it's softer. Yeah. Um, increase the local housing allowance in line with the average rents in an area. That's actually a good thing. I think it's a good thing. That's more money coming in for the landlords, right? Yeah, but not for private. That, that, it's just, that was only for it's only for uh, DSA councils, isn't it? For councils, would, would it have an, an an impact on making the market more competitive overall? Would it have that impact? So if you know that you're going to so people are going to get more housing allowance because it's going to be in line with the rents of the local area. That means private rents in the local area. So you're going to have more DSS tenants in the private sector, right? Mm. So how would that impact in terms of property investment? It would just mean a lot more landlords. It, it, it probably would be a good thing. It'd make it more attractive, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. It's helping. It's helping the tenants in a good. Same as this one, establishing a help to rent scheme. It's obviously, good news for the tenants. Help yeah. to rent, which is a new one on me. Basically, they're gonna. It looks like they're gonna lend you the money for the deposit. But obviously, if it benefits the the tenants, makes it easier to rent. It makes Absolutely. It easier to although all that, all that will happen is is that rents will go up, won't they? Because then people will be able to afford more. I don't know. Uh, it's a good thing for landlords, I suppose. I think it's a good thing, and I think there are. It's not to be underestimated how people to put together, you know, two or three months deposit when you're renting a property. That's that can be a lot of money that people don't actually have. So that's I think true. That, I think it's a really good scheme. It encourages people to rent ultimately, and that's what you want, right? Yeah. That's what landlords want. They want more, more availability. Yeah, I agree. That, 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 that is a good one. Yeah. Uh, promote longer tenancies of three years or more. With it. We we mentioned this earlier, didn't we? With the with the with the abolishment of the of the section twenty one, yeah. have a long term tenancy. Most landlords, I actually think that would suit. Yeah. And it's got an inflation linked annual rent increase. So if you literally are just buying something that you want to rent long term, my only concern with that is getting that they out. Enforce it. Yeah. It's like if if it's just an option, which I suppose it already is now, then it's a good thing. But if it's an enforced thing, if you're renting to a private tenant, you have to offer them up to three years. But then, then it's then it's yeah. not. And also, yeah, exactly. What provisions have they got for you to get out of it? So yeah. you know, you want to you're absolutely happy to let it for three years. But actually, something's happened that you want your property back. You need to maybe move back into property yourself. So yeah, I think it's not. I think the idea is great that if you're settling in an area, you'd like to know, as we've already discussed, mm-hmm. that you could stay there for three years. It makes you feel stable. It makes you feel secure. And in theory, most landlords would welcome that. I think for a professional landlord, so it's your own home. Yeah. But I think for a professional landlord, it's probably a good thing. You've got the rent increase already built in. You've got a long-term contract, no voids. Yeah. Uh, But also, how tightly... The other other problem is, are they going to hold the landlord to it, but not the tenant? Well, that's true. In which case, it's and we just don't a bad know the thing. Detail. Yeah, and we don't know the detail to that. So we'll see. I'm not sure. I'm not sure on that one. Um, and improve protection against road landlord. Ro- I can't talk. Rogue landlords with mandatory licensing. Um, good in theory. Like it. You do not want rogue landlords. There's already. I think what they actually really need to do is just start enforcing the, the rules that are already in place. The rules are already there. They don't need new 
rules. You just need to, because they just don't enforce them. So that's the problem. I agree. But how do you enforce it when you don't know who's doing what? So I quite like the idea. It's like taxi licensing. I'd, I'd, I'd reintroduce a dog license personally. Do you know what I mean? It's like there are people, there are rogue dog owners, there are rogue taxi drivers, there are mm. rogue everybody, aren't there? It'd be quite nice, I think, in theory, to know that you as a landlord, you're part of a mandatory licensing scheme. You're licensed to be a landlord. It is your profession. You are investing in property. You're doing your very best for your tenants, which most landlords do. Mm-hmm. You've ticked all the boxes. You've done your health and safety. You've done all your checks. You've done yeah. all the things that you provide on your on your amazing courses. That actually you can you can tick those boxes and you are a verified, certifiable landlord. I think that might be quite a nice accolade. It just depends on the cost. It depends on the cost. It just like, I've got no. I, I I quite like it if it's cheap, stroke free. To, yeah. To to, to, to to it's not going to be, is it? Yeah, but it could be a nominal. It could be a nominal cost, but it would definitely peppercorn. help with the enforcement. Peppercorn. <laughs> but it would definitely help with the enforcement. Yeah. Wouldn't Which is it? probably a good Which thing. Which I think would be a good thing. The other thing is it makes it, it raises the standards, raises and, and for any yeah. good landlords out there. Which I'm sure everyone watching this is. Of course. You don't want there to be rogue landlords. No. Because it, so, yeah. So, probably good. Overall, though, there are a few things in there which, like the 500% thing on. The, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say, is this worse than Labour's or equal to? Is it. It's. I think it's worse. I think it's worse. We gave Labour a three. You got to, we're going to have to give this a two. Two and a half. I don't know. I think they are really keen on changing the perspective on the quality of properties. They're very big on energy. I would have said it was more of a green manifesto. It does feel green. It does feel very green, doesn't it? But in conjunction with all the other things that they're doing that we're not going to talk about because we're just talking about property, I can see that some of it makes sense. I would say I would give it the same score as Labour. Go on, three. There we go. Liberal yeah, Democrats, three. you're a three. You're a three. The Green Party. Yeah, the Green Party. They are big on insulation. Now, in all fairness, they are highly unlikely to win the, the general election. True. But um, but they've got the young votes, remember? They they are really, so all the climate change, and they're be, they, I can see just at a glance that they're big, they're going to be big on energy in terms of their policies. Yeah, yeah. And well, you've got the your... Cl- the clue is in the name. The clue is in the name, and you've got your Greta Thunbergs, and you've got the sort of, you know, everything that's been going on, Extinction Rebellion, all of that going on about these very issues. So yeah. they're not going to win. But they might be influential, you never know. If we have you a hung parliament, know. they could have a say. That is very, very true. Who knows? Who so knows? They're, they're popular with the uh, with the young. Are they mm. popular with the landlords? Let's have a look. Well, so we'll see. <laughs> no. So uh, <laughs> number one, uh, the, the provision of better insulation for all homes that need it, with heating upgrades for a million homes a year by 2030, prioritising people on low incomes first. So well, it means they're going to pay for it. Sounds like it. Um, maybe they're going to find some clever way of taxing people. We'll find out later on to how they're going to pay for this. But yeah, that, uh, so far, until we find out how they're going to tax people, <laughs> that sounds okay. Yep, free insulation for all homes. Absolutely. I always find it interesting, people like the Green Party, because, you know, like with, with Conservatives and, and, and Labour, and pretty much mainly just those two, but they know their manifesto, they're actually going to have to at least attempt to follow it through. People like the Green Party, they can pretty much say what they want because they know they're not going to get in. Yeah, there, but, there, there is that. But also, they, they are very principled. And I have to say that I've really enjoyed watching their growth. And I think the, their new leaders and their past leaders have been very compelling in their arguments. How realistic they are is, is, and financially, how realistic the, the, the numbers are at the end of the day. Yeah. It's something to be sort of calculated. But let's just see. We'll let's see. see. So next, uh, empower local councils to bring empty homes back into use. I quite like that. I think so as well. No one likes empty homes. No, I live. I live in an area of London where there are lots of empty homes, and you know what? It kind of like, I wouldn't say half the street is empty, but maybe like ten percent of the street is empty, and it does. You know, we, it's nice to have lots of people around. It's nice to see the lights on at night you know, rather than all these dark homes. How, how would that work? So let's say I own a house in your street that's mm. empty. Mm. The councils have the uh, they, they've got the power. They're being empowered. To bring them back into you. Does that mean they can just take it off me? I think that ultimately is going to be what it is. Like, was it compulsory possession? So the compulsory on, purchase order? I don't know how they'll do it. So on the one hand, I, I hate it, in a way. Because mm. it seems ridiculous. Like, But on the other hand, anyone that's a landlord or watching the show and wants to make money from property wouldn't just have an empty home. So it won't really affect no. me. Um, 
True. But it does seem it's a bit of a strange one. Would you agree? It's it is a government interfering, but ultimately it may be that they 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 do they don't harm the property. And in fact, having a property occupied, as we know, as I'm sure you can probably confirm, that having a property that's lived in is much better for the property oh, than a property yeah. that, that is just left empty. And for the country. Empty. You, don't want, the country. you don't want to home. So, no. yeah, I'm, not, I'm, I'm undecided on that one. But overall, I probably quite like it. Mm. it doesn't really, from my selfish point of view, it, it's probably a good thing. And from mine too. And mine too, too. Yeah. So we'll go with that. Yeah. Uh, although I would be pissed off if I had an empty home and it got taken off me. Personally. It might be that they just kind of like do it up and, and rent it for you. Mm, it's true. Who, know, who, I don't knows? Know. I, who knows? Who knows? Uh, ensure uh, and there's quite a lot of energy efficient stuff which is all is all great but which I'm going to skip over yeah. um, ensure 8 million rented homes are rated A for efficiency by 2030 now that one's a worrying one because how are they going to ensure that yeah that's exactly the question that popped into my mind how are they going to do it 8 million rented homes are rated A or higher again so. they're targeting landlords because rented homes yeah, but they, I'm sure they're including some council homes in that too, because they're rented it's as well. It's going to be landlords though, isn't it? But it's, it's going to be It's going to be the landlords that have to pay for it. You're going to have to get the rating. The landlords are going get, to get the A rating. So it's going to cost you more, and that's quite high. In fact, in some houses, it's like pretty much impossible to get it to that without... Some of the older houses. Yeah. Especially listed properties. How are you ever going to do that? Well, listed properties, you just can't. You can't. I live in a listed property. I can't change the windows. I can't do anything, really. No. I, can, I can do insulation. Right now, the rules don't apply to listed properties. So, no. like, they, like, with the energy efficiency, you've got to have it at a certain rating. If it's listed property, that doesn't apply. So, but, but what about a rented listed property? It doesn't. It still doesn't apply. So, I, I rented a grade two listed property, not my last home, the one before, mm. and it was nowhere near... It no. was about an F, and it, yeah. you know, and but it was fine because literally the windows, because the original windows had like holes. But in that's the what side. I've, got, I've got sash windows, yeah. and you can literally feel the breeze. Yeah, you know. I, I, what, what, what? There's one point. Do you know? It was like it was a Tudor house I lived in, so they had like the wooden with, within oh, the bricks. Lovely. And if you stood at a certain angle, you could actually see the lights <laughs> through the wood. There's the holes <laughs> yeah. in the wall. In the wall. Uh, it's crazy. Um, so. I think that's going to cost you more money, guys, unfortunately. Mm. Uh, give council the power to set their own housing targets uh, while extending powers to prevent land banking by charging developers who sit on land. Um, I, I want, if I want to buy land and sit on it and then sell it, is that an issue? Is that an issue? Is it... It's a difficult... Is it reasonable? So, again, I'm picturing myself back in Norfolk where you've got villages that are expanding and then one developer's just got this big plot of land that's stopping development of a village and he's just sitting on it 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years. What's reasonable? Depriving the local area from developing. Is that reasonable? I'm, I'm, I, I don't know. I don't have a, an answer to it. But mm, on the got, other hand... You've got to decide whether you want to sit on land, guys. If you want to sit yeah. on land, it's a bad thing. If you don't, then it's probably not an issue. Yeah, um, true. So, bu- 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 um, all right, lift the local housing allowance in line with the average rents. Good. I think it was similar to, I think, was it Labour that had a similar one to that? Or yep. Lib Dems? Lib Dems, yeah. Yep. Good. Yep. Uh, introduce rent controls on private tenancies. Okay. To reflect the average local income rates. Yeah, but yeah, they're introducing rent controls on private tenancies. Terrible. Terrible. Because then that once they set the rent, they can do what they want. Once they've got the power, and it, what will happen is they'll probably bring it in. They'll probably make it fair-ish to begin with, and then just knock it down, 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 down. Yeah, I mean, we've had this argument already um, with one of the other policies. I think in an ideal world, to make it to make rent affordable for people on lower incomes, you know, I think it, an utopia would be that there's enough property to go around to reflect people's incomes. There is. That's that would be. That well, in the, area, in the area. In the area where you can be do you with mean your extended by the area, family. Do you mean England. Because <laughs> <laughs> there is. I mean, we have that already. I mean, but you think that one was bad? Brace yourself for oh. this. You HMO owners out there, right? Get this. <laughs> this is what makes this one the worst. So, end no fault eviction, section twenty one. We talked about that. Bad. Hate it. A lot. A uh, few of them are doing that. Right. But let me get this. And enable renters and HMOs to buy and run their own home as a housing co-
co-op. So in other words, you have a HMO, you put ten- your tenants, and then they have the right to just take it off you. <laughs> Just let that sink in. You buy a HMO, you refurb it, you turn it into a HMO, you get tenants in, and they go, yeah, we don't need you anymore. We're going to... We're going to create a cooperative. It's ridiculous. It is a bit odd, I have to say. I did smile when I saw that one. I think the intentions are probably good. God knows where that's come from. Intentions are good. How are the intentions? It's just well, not fair. It, it, How no, is it fair? No, I think they just want people who, people who are never able to go onto the property ladder. I think this is the theory but why behind should it. And I don't necessarily agree it? with it. No, no, I don't necessarily agree with it. What I think they're trying to say is that people who are serial renters who are never going to be able to afford their own property, so at least have yeah. some power and say over the property that they live in, um, rather than be subjected to landlords, be they rogue landlords or decent landlords, Mm -hmm. still subject to the whims and wishes of a landlord. But I think, personally, as a lawyer, there is enough control already. There should be, you know, proper enforcement activities going on that that wouldn't require people wanting to set up a co-op in your own property. It's it's outrageous. (laughs) It's outrageous. Last, replace council tax and business rates with land value tax. Now, land value tax is going to be charged to the, the person that owns the land. So if you've got someone renting, the council tax will no longer be responsibility of the of the tenant. Yeah. It will be responsible for you. They're also going to swallow in this land value tax stamp duty, capital gains, inheritance tax. Basically, they're going to tax the crap out of private landlords. So earlier on, when we looked at the better insulation, we said, how are they, how are they, going, to, how are they going to afford are they going to afford to provide all this insulation? Yeah. I think we That's now know answer. why. But they're going to tax the <laughs> crap out of you guys. Yeah. I'm going to go for a one out of ten. This it pretty much couldn't be worse. Right. I I agree with you for on a commercial basis. Absolutely agree with you. Um, I think some of the some of the concepts are really valuable, and I think. As landlords, we do need to be mindful of the planet. We do need to be mindful of energy. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to so, let the tenant buy the property off you. No, we're, we're gonna not going to do that. You, we're going to force you to, we're going to tax the crap out of you. We're going to let the tenant have the property off you. And we're going to choose the rent that you no. can you can charge. That's no. what they're saying. Yeah. No, I, 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 you've got me there. I would say. One out of ten. Should I get one and a half? Because I do value the fact that I think as landlords, we need to be changing our our perspective. And when younger landlords come through, they are going to be greener. And they are going to be thinking about how to save energy. You're going to save on your bills anyway, right? So, well, the tenant is. So, so, but ultimately, it is something that we should think about. So I'm going to give it half a point more than you. So combined points is one and a quarter. Which we round do we round quarters up or down we're not rounding down do we round up or down no we're not rounding one we're not rounding one, one and a quarter ten. one and a quarter i insist okay so pretty interesting looking through the key points um i mean for me i'm i'm not going to say who i'm who i'm voting for um so i'm not going to even make any 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 references for who i'm voting for because it would just be un, unwise for me to tell people i was voting conservative or whichever one i was voting for no. um so all I can say is, if you rank them out of 10, uh, conservative, from a property investor's point of view, got the highest. But there's other factors to take into consideration, like, um, I'm sure there are other factors that you can take into consideration. I'm sure there are, but we're limiting this to just property, right? Yeah, and from a property point of view, it's hard to say. It's quite close amongst the three losers. <laughs> um, so it's up to you to decide which party you, you vote for. I think I think that's absolutely. Is fair. that a fair way of summing up? Okay. Well, um, we didn't want to be at all biased towards no, any parties. Should, I'm wearing blue be. today to be neutral. Yeah. Uh, hold on. Is blue one of the parties? Or is blue? Well, I, maybe. Maybe I'm not maybe. sure. No. Anyway. Thank you very much for tuning in to this week's show. We'll be back next week, uh, back by our usual format with uh, Alastair. Um, and check us out seven o'clock. You can Spotify, Apple Podcast. Uh, where else are we? Pav. We're everywhere. YouTube. Yeah. Lots of other places. Please do tune in. Thanks ever so much. Thank you, Marie, for joining us on the show. We really do pleasure. appreciate having you on. And uh, see you next week, guys. Take care. Bye bye.